What's going on everybody? Welcome to my channel, to this new video where we are going to talk about what is Spark and why should you learn it right now. Now, if we look at a very common data platform architecture, we have two very important components. One of them being the data lake, which stores large amounts of data in a file format, usually open file formats. So this could be a cloud object store, for example, S3, which is quite cheap for storing large amounts of data in file format. On the other hand, we have a data warehouse, which is quite expensive to operate and quite expensive to buy licenses, for example, Oracle. And we, we need to scale this for our peak load. So the data warehouse actually provides an SQL API and usually the business intelligence and reporting use cases use this very, very structured data from the data warehouse to provide insights into the analytics of this data. Additionally, we have advanced analytics use cases, for example, machine learning or artificial intelligence. And here we use quite different technologies than we would use for BI and reporting. So these libraries, they usually require us to have file access and to load large amounts of data into the model training, for example. And therefore, these analytics use cases or advanced analytics use cases require access to the data lake, which holds large amounts of data in file format. Now we have two ETL processes here, which we need to maintain, which makes this platform not so ideal, but whatsoever, this is still the most commonly used data platform architecture. Now let's have a look how Spark fits into this picture. And basically you can see this little bubble containing Spark appear basically everywhere here. So we use it in all of the ETL processes to shuffle data around from the data sources into the data lake and then from the data lake into the data warehouse. And then we can use it even on the BI and reporting side to do analytics on structured data. And we can also use it on the advanced analytics side basically to pre-process data or even to build advanced analytics use cases with itself. Now that makes Spark actually quite omnipresent in data platforms. And that's why it's such an important skill if you would like to become a professional data engineer. Additionally, it connects basically to all of the major data stores in the big data ecosystem, for example, Kafka or also SQL databases, HDFS for being a data lake technology and so on. So it's it's quite well connected within the big data ecosystem. Now, Apache Spark is actually a distributed processing engine, which means that it will distribute or execute our user program in a distributed manner on an entire cluster of machines. So this may be one, two, three, 10, 20, or even hundreds of machines that can work simultaneously on solving the same problem for us. And all of that complexity that comes with the distributedness of the execution is encapsulated by, by the Spark framework. Now, what we do is we write a user program using an SQL-like API, which is declarative, and will be translated into the execution model of Spark to be executed distributedly. Now, Spark consists of many components and provides APIs for many languages. For example, we have an SQL API for Spark SQL, and then we have APIs for Python, Scala, Java, and R. And as Spark builds a logical internal representation, it doesn't matter which of these API languages you use. Then on the bottom, we have the distributed execution model, which is implemented in Spark Core. Now there exist RDDs, the directed acyclic graph, stages and tasks. So everything Spark needs to actually execute tasks distributedly on a cluster. And in between, they have also implemented many high level abstractions. On the left side here, we have Spark SQL, which is the most commonly used component of Spark. And this component provides us with a high level declarative SQL like API. So we can write user programs um, using SQL like transformations. On the other hand, we have the MLlib, 
which basically provides machine learning algorithms, and GraphX, which we can use for graph-like data. Now, wrapping this up, being able to develop Apache Spark applications is a highly demanded skill if you would like to become a professional data engineer. Now, if you go and search for data engineering jobs, the probability that you see Spark on the requirements list is exceptionally high. Now, you can become a professional Apache Spark engineer by going to my website academy.philipmannesbronenberg.de and there you can find on-demand video courses for Python and Scala or even and one-on-one -on -one coaching with me where we will do, do code reviews and teach you everything in your own pace. And there's also a three-day workshop which happens regularly every couple of months. So if you're interested in learning Spark, check out this website. All right, thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.